Hello YouTube, I'm going to explain how to, I created this ALU here. Uh, it's going to be a fairly lengthy uh, tutorial and you're going to have to have a basic understanding of how redstone and the redstone properties work in Minecraft. But uh, if you understand that then you should in theory be able to build an ALU such as this. It's quite large but your first one may be a little smaller than what this one is. So the first thing I'm going to teach you how to do is build what in technical terms is called a multiplexer. So if you look up here I've got uh, basically a graph or some text explaining which having which switches down activate which circuit. So this switch down activates the adding circuit. The first and the second switch down activate the subtracting circuit. And the second switch down only activates the OR circuit. Now, how this works is actually quite simple. It's this over here. Basically, it takes the inputs here, and each one of these wires is a single possibility of the combination of those of those input lines there. So, this one here is when they're all off. This one here is on when the first switch is on. This one here is on when the second switch is on. This one here is on when both of them, the first and the second switch is on. And so on and so forth, all the way up to the end. Now, I will build a cross section of this so you understand how it works and you can basically just replicate it down. One of the things you'll need to take into account though is for every line that you put here, the distance of this increases by a power of 2. So if you just have 2, it will be this long. If you have 3, it will be this long. If you have 5, it will be this long. I'm just taking rough guesses of the length here, by the way. Uh, another thing you want to watch out for is where to put the redstone repeaters must put them in gaps between the the pillars here or the rows I should say and it works like a cross section kind of like a hash does now I will go over here and build the front end of it and the first and I'll also build the first output which is right there So the first thing you want to do is your redstone input lines, so just one, I'm going to make four of them, this four is a nice even number. So you will want to build this, something like this for the front of it. You will only build this bit once. Now for behind it, you want to build rows of redstone like this. I'm going to lay the ground first. Trust me, it's a lot easier if you build it from the ground up, knowing what you're doing. Because uh, the first time I built one of these, it, was, it took me quite a while because I had to go around and destroy blocks and whatnot, trying, you know, get into the things. Okay, so for every possibility, there is two times the inputs. So it's four inputs. That's eight possible outputs because we go. That's two, that's four, six, and eight. 
So we need eight lines here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and the eighth one. Okay. Now, the first input will look like this. All inputs should be the same, mind you. So where is it? It's like this. It's like, oops, here. Um, what am I thinking? Oh yeah. That's right. This one here. And this is the output line. Don't worry that it's connecting up like that because when we put it, this redstone, ah, oh, sorry, the brick on top, it will cut the redstone connection. Okay. So don't worry if you're not really following what I'm doing here. Just copy it exactly and you will be fine, trust me. Okay. So we're almost finished. The first one. Two, two. And that's it. Okay, so here is the first output. Copy this, and once you've done it, all you have to do is this row here need to stretch out all the way to the end here. Now I'm going to pause this recording and uh, actually I'm not going to pause it, I'll just speed it up so you can watch what I'm doing when I make this. So remember start from the ground up first. So do these rows here, then you do the next rows, then the next rows again. Okay, so the main part of it is done. Now what we need to do is tell it when to turn each line on and off. 
guys. So to do that, we use this top row to tell it when to turn the lines off. So for the first row, we want to put it on every second one. Like such. Then for the second row, we want to put it on uh, every second one again, but we do it in sets of two. And the first, the first um, ones are basically always start with off. So two off, two on, two off, two on, and then for the back row here. We say four off and four on. So where is it? One, two, three, four. Like uh, that. And the back row will have nothing on whatsoever. It's always always off. Now you just keep repeating this pattern. Uh, depending on how far yours goes. So the next row would have the first eight off and then the ninth row, which would be here if I had more input lines, would be all on. So what you can do now is just, uh, I'll just put these lines out a little bit more so you can see the outputs. Like such. And, uh, oh yeah. And we've also got to tell it when to turn on. So it's basically what you did on the top row here, but the opposite. So, um, we will put everyone on here. So if you have a look at the top, we left it off. So the bottom one has to be on. The second one's off. The third one is on. The fourth one's off. On, off, on, okay. Then the next row. First two is on. Next two is off. Next two is on. Next two is off. And then for the final row, we have the first four is on. And then the last four is off. And then if we had more, of course, we would put one here and so on. So that's pretty much it for it really. I mean, when they're all off, this line is on by default. If we have switch one on, it should make this one come on. So, uh, I will... Where is it? Redstone... There it is, redstone torch. Um... Let's get rid of the sign. Not really using that. So you can see that one's on, and I'll just put another one here so it's a little elevated. If I put the torch here, you should see the first one turn off and the second one turn on, and it did. And if you have a look here, it's, it's only the second one is on. And then if I put the torch in the middle here, remember that one, you'll see that the fourth one is on. Now to make this one turn on, I need to put the torch on the second one only, which is here. And there we go. So that is basically how our multiplexer works. And uh, this one here is a larger one. Now, each of the outputs from the multiplexer basically go to each circuit. So I'll just show you this one here. We'll go down to the...
So, ah, here's the other one. So, from the multiplexer circuit, it comes up here, up the top here. And then it's basically an AND gate for the inputs. So, if the circuit is on, then it will allow the inputs from the input bus lines here to go into the full bit ripple adders, which are these things here. I'll explain how to create these and how they work in a future tutorial. And uh, yeah, that is basically it for multiplexer. The um, the seven segment displays actually work very similar to how the multiplexers work. But instead of going like four on, four off or whatever, we basically put the torches where we want the lights to come on instead, depending on the the uh, how you've wired it up. So uh, yeah, I hope that this tutorial was useful for you, and uh, have a great day.